Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Ford Edge. This is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and the great part is it is a hidden cross tube so the only thing that you're going to see hanging down is going to be the receiver tube opening and the safety chain loops giving you a nice clean look but all the usability of your hitch. Being a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening means that you have a host of different accessories you can load into here. So if you're using a bike rack, cargo carrier, or a ball mount, you're gonna have plenty of options. And all of those are gonna be held in place by a 5 8 pin and clip. Now this does not come with the hitch. A lot of your accessories will come with a pin and clip, but if you want a locking one, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. And that's gonna be really nice because you can load your accessories up, lock it in place, and it's not gonna walk away in the hands of someone else. When towing a trailer, you're going to want to hook up your safety chains and the loops here are nice and easy to get to with a standard S hook or even a larger clevis style works pretty well here. When towing a trailer, you're going to want to adhere to the weight capacities of the hitch and this one's rated pretty well. You have a gross trailer weight rating of 4,500 pounds, which is going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up on it. Now you also have a tongue weight rating of 675 pounds and that's going to be the downward pressure put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So some of your suspended accessories like a cargo carrier bike rack, you're not gonna wanna go over 675, but that's a decent amount of weight. So I really don't worry too much about that. Now this can be used with a weight distribution hitch, but it's not gonna change any of the numbers. And before just hooking up and towing a trailer, you're gonna to wanna to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of, and then compare it with the numbers of the hitch. Take the lowest of the numbers, and that way you're not overloading and you're staying safe. Now when choosing accessories that fold up or a ball mount, you wanna make sure that you're gonna have clearance and not make contact with your hitch. And so measuring from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia, we're looking right at about four inches. So just something to keep in mind when choosing those accessories. Now, if you need to uh, pick up a ball mount, you're gonna to wanna to determine the rise or drop needed to hook up to your trailer. And this one has a ground clearance of 13 inches. So you can use that measurement to figure out what you need. Now, something to keep in mind when you have your accessories loaded up, like your cargo carriers or bike racks, as you go up an incline, those are gonna to tilt towards the ground. So just keep that in mind while driving you don't want those to hit the ground as far as the installation goes this one's pretty easy you're just going to remove two panels and then we're just going to fish wire up some of the hardware to get this bolted up and there is one stud that you'll have to cut off so you might need a grinding wheel or a dremel something along those lines but overall this is a pretty easy installation and i'm going to walk you through all the steps so let's go ahead take a look at that and get your hitch installed to begin our installation on both sides we have a plastic panel underneath that the, that we need to remove there's gonna be two 5.5 millimeter screws that we're gonna to need to take out. And we're gonna be repeating the same steps on the other side. So whatever you do on one side, do the other. Now you're also gonna to wanna to have a nice spot to keep all your hardware organized that you take off. It's gonna make reinstallation a lot easier. There's also two nuts that are up here attaching it. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. And those are gonna be a 10 millimeter. With that hardware taken out, this should just pop out. So go ahead and get the other side taken out and then we'll just set this aside for later reinstallation. So we're gonna be lowering down our muffler to give us access to get our hitch up in place. And before we do that, we need to support it uh, once it's off the isolators, it's going to want to hang down and there's really no support down the way and we don't want our exhaust to get damaged. So I'm up on a lift, so I'll be using a cam buckle strap to kind of just create a cradle for um, our exhaust here. Now, if you're doing this in your garage or on your uh, driveway or anything like that, as long as you put like a block of wood or cardboard box, just something to kind of keep this up once it drops down, that should be sufficient. Now, as far as prying off our isolators, Sometimes they can get a little bit caked up and kind of tricky to pry off. So you can use a soapy water solution or a penetrating oil works really well just to kind of help slide it along. And then you're just going to take your pry bar and just slide this. It should come out fairly easy. So there's one side and then there's going to be another on the other. And if you need to give a little bit more uh, leverage here to get this to pry off, the muffler is going to be loose from that other one being off. So you can kind of slide it down a little bit and that's gonna make it a little bit easier. And you can see our cradle's kind of doing the work here, and that gives us our nice clearance to get our hitch up. 
your vehicle may or may not have a plastic panel with a heat shield uh, kind of on the back side of it. If that's the case, you're going to want to pop that off. And one of the points where it mounts up is going to be this stud. Now, ours didn't have it, but the stud is still here. So we need to cut this off to give us clearance for our hitch. So if you have a Dremel, that'll work fine. I just have a multi-tool here with a metal blade. So we'll go ahead and get this cut off nice and flush. Just for extra protection, that's gonna be raw metal that we cut off. So I'm just gonna do just a little spray of clear, clo uh, clear coat on there. Just kind of keep that raw metal from corroding and rusting long-term. To get our hardware in place to mount up our hitch, we're gonna be using a fish wire technique and all of it's gonna feed through this oval channel. And that's gonna be large enough to get our spacer block as well as our carriage bolts pulled through. So I'll show you how to do this side one here real quick. We'll take this coiled end and we're gonna feed that from the side hole here down to this oval hole. And I'm gonna take my spacer block. You can feed that up in the, in the frame rail. And then we're just gonna coil our carriage bolt onto here. And feeding this in can get a little bit tight. You can see, uh, well, that one popped in, but if you need to, you can kind of go up from a backwards style and feed it in that way, but it should fit through. And then we'll have this up here to become our stud. Now these side ones, when we get our hitch up in place, we're actually gonna want these in the frame. And that way, when we lift it up, we can pull these out and it's gonna hold it in place. But what I'm gonna do is just take our end here and put a nice bend on it. It's gonna make it a lot easier to keep this in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process for this hole, this hole, as well as this one. Now with these all in place, we're just going to go ahead and repeat on the other side. With an extra set of hands, we're going to go ahead and get our hitch put up in place. And we're going to take our fish wires and feed them into the corresponding holes. And what we're going to do again, just make sure those side ones are pushed into the frame rail. Because once we lift this up, we'll pull those out and then it'll hold itself up, making it a lot easier uh, to get our hardware put up in place. So you can see with those pulled through, now we can uh, let this rest. We'll go ahead and grab our flange nuts. Now, we're gonna get these started and having the hitch kind of way on the studs is gonna help uh, make these not push back in the frame rail. So be careful pulling your fish wire off because if these fall back into the frame, you are gonna have to get them out and it's gonna get kind of tricky. So having this kind of in place, you can see it's pretty, pretty sturdy here. I'll just go ahead and get these started. So the two here are going to get the flange nuts as well as this one. Our front one is going to be a little bit different. So for this one, I think it's because of the clearance here that have this gusset, so uh, the flange nut's not gonna work. So what we do have included in the kit is gonna be a split washer as well as a nut. So we'll go ahead and just get that started as well. and then make sure you have all your hardware hand tightened on on the other side. Tightening this down, we're gonna to wanna to make sure to do the bottom ones first. It'll kind of pull the hitch up and then we can tighten the side ones. This is all gonna be done with an 11 16 socket. So just go ahead, get this tightened down. You don't have to go too crazy here. We just want it snug because we're gonna be coming back with a torque wrench here shortly. And we can tighten up our side ones. And sometimes it can actually be spinning around. So if you need to, you can kind of pull on this and that way it has pressure against it. And then that's gonna cinch this down a little bit more and then tightening it. So it's just that carriage bolt spinning around. So now we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and we're gonna use the torque setting found in the instruction manual. Now, if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. So just go through and torque these all down. So with everything torqued down, we can go ahead and get our panels put back in place.
lift our muffler back up and pop that back into the isolators. You can remove whatever you had supporting the exhaust. And that was a look at installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Ford Edge.